Here comes one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL postseason history. The Cardinals signal caller, Kurt Warner. It's a bookend to my career that that I wanted. I think we have just witnessed NFL history, legend, and lore. The hardest thing would have been leaving the game, had he not had the opportunity to show people what I could still bring to the table. And that's what these last three years have meant to me. This is truly, truly one for the ages. Throws over the middle, what a catch! Touchdown, Arizona! A perfect pass by Kurt Warner. I think these last three years have really finished the story. No one who loves opportunity thrives on opportunity, thrives on competition, and absolutely has been the most successful sports story probably in the last 50 years in the National Football League. You have to understand, as any Cardinals beat writer at the time, you had lived through these veteran quarterbacks being signed, you know, Boomer Esiason, Dave Craig, Jim McMahon, you know, Jeff Bla I mean, it was like, okay, another, another guy, Kurt Warner. I feel like I've got a lot of football left in me, and with the players that will surround me here, I think that we could do some great things. And to understand the dynamics of the situation, to understand where my career is, where I've been the last couple years, to understand the Cardinal situation on it is that, hey, I want to get back on the field and I want to show people what I can do. I thought it was a good signing. Uh, he didn't have a great year with the New York Giants, of course. I thought it was a guy, a veteran quarterback that you were going to bring in that had actually done an awful lot in the National Football League. And maybe he'd actually get the opportunity to play some quarterback for the Cardinals because the rumor was already out there that we were going to draft a, a young quarterback. We were going to go get a young quarterback and bring him in. So maybe be a good mentor. Here I am at this point in my career where nobody expects anything, you know, he's going to the desert to kind of disappear in the desert with the Arizona Cardinals that nobody expected anything from them, that they're never going to win again either. And so this is kind of like a perfect match. You know, and if everything works out, maybe they get a chance at Matt Leinart, you know, so it was, you had that feeling and, you know, Kurt was so open in those days you know, interviewed him during the draft time, and, and he's lobbying for not taking Rick. Oh, you're going to struggle with a rookie quarterback if you want to get where you want to go, you know, have a veteran that's going to start, you know, et cetera. Basically making the case for himself. I think we were the top passing team in the National Football League in 2005. And I'm sure, you know, a bunch of it was selfish too. Like, I don't want him to take a quarterback because I, I know I can still play and I believe I've got good years ahead of me. But you know, it, it's the move that they made, and I fully understood why they made that move. With the 10th uh, choice in the 2006 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Matt Leiner, quarterback, USC. So Denny Green has his quarterback long term. I did think this is Matt Leiner's job going forward, top 10 pick. The Cardinals uh, had made a bold move to go get him. It was a big deal with Cardinal fans at that point in time. It's Matt Leinart long term. So you have to be able to understand the offense with an extreme ability to grasp several positions. Matt Leinart will be able to do that. I feel good. I'm ready. You know, I mean, this is my job now. I'm ready to go. I think Denny Green, you know, wanted Matt Leiner to learn behind Warner, thought Warner would be a good influence. They said all that, but you know, Denny Green in his brief history with Arizona up until that time had proven he's not the most patient guy. He was going to make changes if, if things weren't going the right way. Oh, look at that, look at that! And the Rams got the ball. Unbelievable! Kurt Warner, who has fumbled more than anybody in the NFL coming into this game, fumbled again. I remember that play, and it was the guard pulling that actually knocked the ball out of Kurt Warner's hands. Kurt Warner never told anybody about that until later when it came out. It's understanding the bigger picture, which very few people could see and understand at the time. And I got booed out of the stadium. And so, you put all of those things together and it was really, really hard. 
Cardinals and Falcons. Atlanta with a record of two and one. Arizona coming into this game. Warner takes, drop his pass, deflected, picked off by D'Angelo Hall, and Hall is in for the Atlanta touchdown. Back to the left, sack to the ball, is fumbled. Another fumble by Kurt Warner, his 10th in the last three games. I don't know if I've ever seen a quarterback play so poorly. And meanwhile, on the Cardinals sideline, Matt Leinart is warming up. Necessary. What do you know about the quarterback situation going forward now? Oh, I don't know anything. I'm just going to be ready to play uh, whenever I can. And that's it. Matt will start next week. Matt's done. He said right after that benching, I think after four games, he said like the next week, you know, I'm keeping all my options open. You know, I, I've, I've got to contemplate what lies ahead for me in the future. And he didn't come out and say it, but you could tell it's like, do I want to go through all of this again? 2007 ushered in a new hope for the Arizona Cardinals. With rookie head coach Ken Wisenhunt came a renewed sense of optimism and success. I thought that would be a good environment for a young quarterback to learn and grow. And, um, you know, obviously having a guy of, of his ability, his history, um, is something that's just invaluable. I thought Matt actually played really well his rookie year. It's all on you. This is what you do. This is what you do. But there was just something missing. And, you know, you always feel as a competitor, and having been where I was before, that I felt I was that something missing. All right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They were whispering in the corners of Flagstaff, in the bars of Flagstaff, that Kurt Warner was actually the better quarterback. I remember going in and having a conversation with Coach, just basically saying, is this an open competition? Is the best player going to play? And he told me, yes. Obviously, you've got a high pick in the first round at a quarterback, and that's always something that has great value to a team. But I think one of the things that you always have to be prepared for is who's your backup. We have a quarterback change. Kurt Warner runs onto the field. I, I think you give Kurt Warner a shot. He played very well in the preseason. We started running some no huddle offense and we kind of let Kurt take the reins with that just because he had more experience. Matt did it but you know obviously checks at the line, communication with players, you know those were things that you just didn't want to put on Matt's plate. How can we do this where we can give ourselves a chance to win games while still bringing Matt along to be able to be the future of the franchise? Let's end some speculation because coach Ken Wisenhunt telling the sideline reporters at halftime that the appearance of Kurt Warner was part of a package, as he called it. Those are his words. He said it'd be similar to as if you would bring in two tight ends. So it was by design, and it was planned, according to head coach Ken Wisenhunt. Snap to Kurt. Fires over the middle. Open Fitzgerald. Caught at the five and tackled there. Kurt Warner is balling. He does look sharp. Warner pumps. Fires over the middle. Touchdown. Was it probably a little bit unfair to Matt? Uh, but it allowed me to go, OK, I get to show you me at my best. Oh, what an unbelievable throw on the corner route by Kurt Warner. Anytime you're working two quarterbacks into this situation, you know a change is coming. Kurt Warner brings the Cardinals back from the dead. It really kind of got your attention. Wow, this guy's still got some juice, you know, and he, he can help us. Second and 10 at the 16. Play fake. Leonard in trouble. Leonard sacked back at the five-yard line. He got drilled by Will Witherspoon. And Leonard banged up. He's going to have to leave the game. We missed a pickup on a pressure against the Rams and uh, knocked Matt out. You know, bad luck. It was unfortunate for him because Matt was making some strides. But um, we thought, well, now we're going to see about Kurt just in, in uh, being able to run the offense. Nothing against Matt and nothing against the fact that he could be the future of this organization. But right now, if we want to be successful, the best player is Kurt. I felt like that was when things started to change for us, that people started to see me as the player that, that I was. So Matt Leonard out for the season. Kurt Warner gets the start for Arizona. Next possession, Warner sacked, loses the ball. Julius Peppers oh. then lands on Warner's non-throwing wing as elbow bent. He reaches with his left arm. It looks like he hyperextends that elbow here. The number one prerequisite to playing that position, you had to be tough. Kurt Warner is the starter today, guys, until he shows he can't handle the pain, essentially. Look how he has to hand off. But that's how he had to do it with torn ligaments in his non- You would not be able to play it well if you were not a tough individual. Play fake, Warner looking end zone, fires, and it is caught! 
throws back in the end zone, open Fitzgerald, and he's got it on the end line. Touchdown. Oh, what a throw by Greybeard, Kurt Warner. Cardinals finish first time in nine years with a 500 or better record. The Cardinals close it out at home on a positive note. I never lost hope that I still believe I will be the best quarterback here. The cream will always rise to the top. The best player will show himself at some point, and it will be hard to deny that person an opportunity to see what they can do. I want to be clear about this. When we went into that competition, you know, it was a tough decision, and I talked about it with the owner, Michael Bidwell, about doing it, and we knew that there was going to be some things that were going to make it tough. You know, it was going to be a question every day at training camp. Who's, who's leading? Who's winning? You know, it's not easy on a young quarterback like Matt. It's very difficult. But, um, you know, we thought because of the way we finished, the way we finished um, offensively the 2007 season, that it was fair to give him a chance. Matt gets the 10th pick. I was like, oh, man, he's going to the Cardinals. I'm so excited. And, and then uh, soon comes second round, you know, uh, I'm there. Uh, you know, Dennis uh, Green uh, said he, it was a gift from heaven. It was only fair to uh, draft his garden angel in the second round. That's your friend. You see him in competition and he's struggling, trying to take over the roles. But uh, Kurt and how he competed, I mean, it just seemed like he was the one to take us to the Super Bowl. I knew I was never going to be compared to the greatest that ever played the game because I didn't start my first game till I was 28. I do feel like uh, had I had one continuous run for 12 years with one team, I could have put myself in that conversation. But I say all that with the caveat, there is nothing greater in team sports than being able to be a catalyst for change. It worked the way it did. Uh, Kurt ended up taking over and he saw the magnificence. I have these images of Kurt Warner, the pocket collapsing around him. And suddenly out of this scrum, this pocket collapsing, this arm comes out of nowhere. I've never known a player whose career had the peaks and just the valleys that hit it. I mean, it looked like a drastic EKG, his career. There's no arc to it. You know, it was like, it was like this. And I think back to how he persevered, how he took advantage of every opportunity. And he wasn't going to miss a game. They went to Washington the next week and London Fletcher, who had played with Kurt in St. Louis, was there. And I said, were you surprised Kurt played? And he goes, he, he just started laughing, like this belly laugh. He goes, there was nothing that was gonna keep him from playing a game. He sees this as his last shot. We knew he was gonna play. That anecdote to me kind of illustrate who you know, Kurt Warner is and, and how much that meant to him to resurrect his career a second time. It's like nothing you've ever felt before. Let's get that to business. Let's go get the one next week. And as Todd said, let's shock the world. What a throw by Kurt Warner. This guy is a Hall of Famer. Kurt Warner takes a knee and the Arizona Cardinals will play for the National Football Conference Championship. Would I have enough time to be able to write this story? You know, to change the script on what people thought of me and what people thought of the Cardinals. That's it! The Cardinals have shot the world! They're going to Super Bowl 43! I love that, that the last impression that I've left in the National Football League, but more importantly, for my fan base, you know, for our fan base with the Arizona Cardinals, was arguably the best game I ever played in my career. Unbelievable finish to this game. Do you believe it? I believe I stand here tonight because of what I did with the moments I was given. That to me is um, the bookends that, you know, if I could write it a certain way, I would want to write it that way.